Hello and welcome to today's tutorial on the Pelican Tote by Bagstock Designs, which I will have the link down below. So I love this pattern because it looks so classy when it's done, but does not take long at all to make or cut out. It really is the way that I make it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, well, I mean, it's like 12 pieces, but it, it doesn't take that long to come together. I did not add magnetic snaps. I only do those whenever I'm in the mood and I was not in the mood for this bag. We did add the zipper flap and we extended it all the way into the side seam allowances. Um, we did not add an internal zipper pocket, but we did add a slip pocket on the inside. And then I use one inch webbing, nylon webbing for the handles. You'll get to see how that's done and how it comes together. So again, it's the Pelican Toe by Bagstock Designs. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and let us know what you think. If you like this tutorial or if not, just let us know. All right. Facing exactly. So I'm always trimming down the inner facing. So let's trim down the back. Okay, what we can go ahead and do is add the sides to the back panel since we don't really need to add anything else. So we need So we need two side panels, one each mirrored for the back panel. What we will do is just clip each side together. And we will sew this down a half an inch. I sew mostly everything at a four and a half on my 1181. For construction and top stitching, I always forget to change it back, and I figured four and a half is a good for both. So I just have a bad habit of forgetting to change it back. <laughs> so now we're just going to press this open, and I'm going to top stitch on the side panel, and you want the seam allowance going down towards the side panel. You want to pull it taut, but you don't want to pull it too tight. Next thing I'm going to do to just go ahead and finish 
off this back panel is I'm going to do my darts and add the handles. I use webbing for my handles. This is from Pelican Tooth. I don't know if maybe you could add the darts before you start. I never have. I just go ahead and do it after I've added the side panels. Okay, next I'm going to get some black webbing if I can find it. Uh, there it is. So I do my handles for these just like I do on my normal bags and that is 24 inches. edges just so they don't fray while we're moving around. Okay, so I'm not sure what the pattern says because it's been a while since I've looked at it, but I just add my handles right next to the seam. It's just easier for me to remember that way. And what I'm going to do is top stitch and then I'm going to have about half an inch overhang using my plate as a guide for the measurement. You don't want to back stitch too much across this webbing because it will fray and tear. Ask me how I know. All right. So this back panel is done. And now we will set that aside and move to get some more pieces out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and add my slip pocket to the lining. I do not, um, wait, did I do it for this one? I know that's for the front zipper pocket. So for my pelican totes, I do, why did I cut three? Oh no, I didn't. It was just folded. So for my pelican totes, I don't do the interior zipper pocket because it has an outside zipper pocket. I just add the slip pocket on the inside. So to finish up one of my lining pieces, I'm gonna add the darts and then set it aside. I probably need to print out new pattern pieces or transfer them to uh, plastic because this pattern is old. I've had it for a few years now. I can tell too because it's printed on paper where now that I'm more experienced and stuff like that, I print it all my pattern pieces on cardstock. So this one is pretty, is done. We'll set that to the side. I sew my darts all at once. That's why I'm not sewing them right now. So we will now do the slip pocket. And what I'm going to do, you can add double-sided tape if you want, but I'm just going to eyeball it and do it the width of my foot, which is about four of an inch. I'm gonna top, fold over the top and I'm going to top stitch, like I said, four of an inch. I just take my time. I've been doing this for a while, so I can, I'm pretty good at eyeballing it. At least I think so. <laughs> All right. So I will add double-sided tape to the bottom. 
a quarter of an inch. And this is a brand new roll. I get my leather tape from waywack.com. Um, I know Kelly from It's So Kelly and Creative Bag Making Group has uh, put a link for the double-sided tape she uses. Where is the tape? Oh man, it did not come off. Um, but I am a creature of habit, you could say. So once I find something that I like, I pretty much just use it. And don't mind this, this normally doesn't happen, but I don't think I grabbed it the right way. Okay, there we go. And I just put this along the bottom. I do this for all of my slip pockets. I've been doing it this way now for about three years. It's so much easier. It saves time and money because you're not interfacing or having to use more than one piece. I made a Rudy bag last week out of all uh, faux leather and cotton, like no waterproof canvas, and I used up so much materials. Like, I don't like doing that. So we're just gonna fold it over. And then I'm going to fold this in half to get the center. Fold this in half to get the center. Match them up. I'm gonna go probably, and again, I eyeball this to what I think looks good. And it's gonna be about three and a half inches. So I'm going to start on the right hand side, come down, go across the bottom, go up the center on one side, up the center on one side, come over, come down the center on the other, finish out the bottom and finish out the left hand side. And I'm sorry if you hear any noise in the background, I guess my... They finally hired somebody to clean up the grass around our office. So I'm just using the edge of my, the inside of my foot. And I'm going to backstitch just a couple of times right there to reinforce And then I'm going to use the edge of my whole foot, so it's about a four of an inch, um, to come straight back down. I'm not too worried about this not being even because my seam allowance is a half an inch. So. We're gonna trim off any excess so my seam allowance doesn't mess up. And then we're gonna add the darts and this will be done. Now I do know on this lining piece, you don't add the darts until after, just in case um, wherever you put your slip pocket at. If you put it a little bit too far down, then it will run into your darts. And that's probably why I don't do it beforehand. Because I have to do it, I have to wait till after the slip pocket, so I might as well just do it 
all then. Okay, that one's done. All we have left is the front panel. So we need our bottom piece, the two lining pieces, the top piece, our side pieces, our zipper, our flap, and I think I was going to add magnets to the lining. I'm not sure. I'll decide that later. Okay. I get all of my zipper tape from myhandmadespace.com. She has amazing turnaround time amazing customer service. I mean, just overall good people. They're super nice. Oops. And I just love her products and I am so glad that she is expanding her business into adding a lot more hardware and stuff for bag makers to make it easier to go to like a one-stop shop. Okay, so I'm going to move my zipper head closer to the end so I don't have to worry about moving it when I go to add it to my panel. And again, I just need to trim down any interfacing that overhanged, overhung, overhanged, whichever. Now for the interfacing for my Pelican totes, if I'm using a canvas base, I will only interface with Decaville Light. If I, um, for my panels, if I'm using cotton or cotton micra, I will interface with Woven Fuse 2 and then add Decaville Light. But this is a canvas base that I have, so it's just Decaville Light. And yes, you can piece together Decaville Light. Okay, so we need our bottom panel one of our linings and our zipper pocket. So we're going to lay our zipper right sides together with the bottom panel and with the zipper head out of the way, I don't have to worry about moving it. So we're just going to clip that down. You can baste it down, but I don't, I don't. And then we're gonna take a lining piece and I need to make sure I cut one bigger than the other due to the fold over. You want, and if you do that, you wanna make sure that you're using the right size for your first lining piece. And we're just going to sew that down at a quarter of an inch. What I do is I run my foot along the edge of the zipper. That's what I'm feeling for right here. And some of my lining moved up. That's fine as long as I'm running a thin set zipper. Now we want to fold this lining to the back. You can iron it if you want, but I'm just going to finger press this side and then finger press it down. And this is a good way to go ahead and get your zipper straight, which it is. I'm just going to slide it over here and top stitch on an eighth of an inch. You don't want to pull it too tight because your zipper will end up being wavy. So just hold it straight. And then when you get towards the end, like my zipper tends to trail off. So I'm just gonna hold it straight with my finger. And there we go. So that's how it looks so far. So before we move on, we do need to make our flap. And I think I'm going to do this flap like we do for the uh, Meraki, and that is to have it go into the seam allowance. And I think I'm gonna try that this time with this. Normally I don't. I'm just gonna clip it instead of putting tape. Normally I have it just at the edge of the side panels, but I think we're gonna try it. We'll see how it comes out. I 
All right, we're just going to top stitch all the way around on this flap. An eighth of an inch. this will look. So we just want to make sure that we can get it in the seam allowance on both sides. Clip it to your zipper and I will base this on. And I'm going to baste it as close to the edge as possible. So there's the flap. Now we're going to take our top panel piece and make sure if you're using directional fabric that it you just lay it out to make sure that it's going the right way that you want it and then just flip it over like that. And then you'll never have to worry about if it's upside down. Again, ask me how I know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clip this. Flip this over and then we're going to use the longer piece. And reclip. And then sew it down at a quarter of an inch. Again, just try your best to feel where that zipper is and run your foot along the edge. Just take your time because it's like really thick. All right, so the only thing we're going to flip up now is our top panel and just finger press it. So you want to sew through the top panel and your seam allowance only. Again, just this is a great time to make sure your zipper is straight. And your flap is even, which I need to pull my mine down some. There we go. We're gonna top stitch on an eighth of an inch. And that's how it should look right now. So now, see how this is longer? I did that because normally I would cut this two pieces of the same, and then this would be too short and I couldn't sew across the bottom to close up that hole. So now I'm just going to sew down one side across the bottom and up the other to close up this pocket and my zipper, and then I will trim the rest, trim it down. When you do that though, make sure you move your zipper head back in. And 
that is what our front panel should look like right now. Go ahead and move your zipper to the middle so it, you don't have to worry about that with your side panels. That's what the back looks like. So now we can add our side panels just like we did to the back. Hopefully with um, this, I'm using black croc vinyl that I got from Walmart. Um, and it's it can be really thick. So I'm hoping it will be okay right there where that flap is. We shall see. Now when I'm done, what I'm going to do is make sure both my panels and my lining all matches up because like I said, I've had this pattern forever. It's been cut into forever and I know, I know I could just print off new ones, but yeah, we're going to sew down half an inch. Check and see how this flap is doing. Pretty good, pretty good. So that's what it should look like. So it goes all the way across just like the Meraki does. And now we're just gonna open this up and top stitch. Again, you don't wanna pull too tight, but you do wanna make sure it's straight. Go easy over that flap. If your machine can't handle all the bulk, if you're using full leather, just um, don't have the flap going all the way across. So if your seam allowance is a half an inch, you want your flap to be a half an inch over or less or more, half an inch or more from the side panels. sure that over this flap I did not get any skip stitches because sometimes ratchet can throw a fit and yep right there I probably just need to replace my needle yeah I know I know okay, so we're going to start in the same hole what I'm going to do is just Try and pull these back. And this one did not. It just broke. glad I decided to use there we go okay so that is done and big old pocket is done so now we will do our darts and before we close up our darts I will line everything up and make sure it comes out that they're all the same size. I could do that off camera not to embarrass myself, but. Yes, I know. 
<laughs> new pattern pieces. Okay, well, let's see how they all line up. Oh, I still need to add the webbing to this one. Let's go ahead and do that before I forget. Again, right up against that seam, half an inch is where I'm gonna lay it at. And I'm just going to base this on. See how we did. I'm going to just line up the darts first because that's the important part. And even if I did have good pattern pieces, I probably would still do this because sometimes you never know. I could have gotten a wrong seam allowance or um, I was in La La Land and wasn't paying attention to something. So it's always a good habit to do. Okay, so everything pretty much lines up. So I don't think I'm going to do the magnet magnets for this bag. I don't do them a lot of the time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I'm not going to. So now I'm just going to fold my darts right sides together, just like that. And I like to start, if it's laying out in front of you, I like to start on this one. That way I can uh, do them one after another and don't have to twist too much. So we're going to do them right sides together. And I like to do them at a quarter of an inch. I can't remember what the pattern calls for. So I'm just going to fold the next one. And quarter of an inch. Just move to the next one. Again, like to see. Now, if you interface this like a lot, you might not be able to just squish it and go. So you might have to do them individually. This bag to me, um, I do not interface other than the uh, center panels at all because it's just, I like it to be a little bit slouchy. But that's personal preference. Again, right sides together, matching up those corners and the sides, four of an inch all the way down. I like to do after I get done with the darts is sometimes I'm not paying attention or I don't see it clearly but I will miss the very end of the dart that goes up here into this bag so I just like to open them up and verify that I got them all because even though I've been sewing and making this bag for like four years I still make mistakes because once I make you know, once you make a bag so many times, you think that you can do it in your sleep, and you can, and then your mind starts to wonder, and it only takes one little slip up to mess up. 
So this takes like five seconds out of my time to make sure that it is correct. So. Like this one, uh, it's a little bit too close. It kind of slipped on me. So I'm going to just add another line right to the outside of it so I know that it will not come open. And there we go. Now it's better. Won't come open. Okay, so I'm going to do the lining first. I'm going to match up the darts. Because again, even though I laid them out and checked them, if nothing, if something doesn't match up, at least my darts do, and then I can make the rest of it match up. Okay, and I'm just going to add a couple of clips here. But this is going to be where we turn the bag since we did not add a zipper pocket. going to start on this side a half an inch and once I get to about the where the slip pocket is I'm going to increase at about mm, a little past half an inch so what's that five eighths yeah um, just so it will sit better in the bag and we're gonna sew all the way to a little bit past this dart and then we're gonna pick our needle up move across to create a hole we're gonna start on the other side of this dart and finish it out. So again, let's do a half an inch. And I'm gonna just move my magnet up just a little bit and increase my seam allowance. I do like to backstitch over my darts because if any um, weight that's where it's gonna be. Again, back stitch right there a couple of times. We're gonna pick it up, move all the way down to about an inch from the other dart. And then we're gonna finish off the bag. Don't forget to decrease your seam allowance to back to a half an inch. Which, Sometimes my brain is like, what? What are we doing? And I will trim everything but up here at the top and at the slip pocket seam and at the hole. So it's going to be a, a bunch of small trims. just to reduce bulk in the side seams. There we have it. So our lining is done. We have our nice big hole. Now we just need to do the exterior. Same thing. make sure you are butterflying your darts so it's not like super thick. What I mean by butterflying is one is going one way, one is going the other. I think that's the word is butterflying. So also with the front panel, I'm going to line up where the side panels are. just to see how it goes. And then just 
push everything down so it lines up. Now we can add clips to the rest. Now this, um, the exterior, you just want to do a half an inch. You don't want to increase or decrease. Try and get this done before my partner shows up. And because this is faux leather, I always do a double seam on the outside, on the exterior. Just to help so you don't see those seams whenever you fold it out. So what I mean is we're going to go back here and on the outside of your seam allowance, not the inside because that would defeat the purpose of your seam allowance, on the outside I'm just going to run another line along this line. I do it to all of my totes, actually all everything that I make the leather out of because once you turn it then sometimes you can see those seams right and I don't like that. This helps with that. So now all we're going to do is just trim this down as close to that second line as possible. And turn the bag out. Hopefully, nothing shifted. And before you Add everything together and close it up. You just want to make sure that you are happy with the exterior. So, um, if you hear any noise in the background, my business partner just pulled in and she's working on some sugar scrubs. So, we are at this point. So now we have our exterior right sides out and our lining is wrong side out. And we are going to stuff this into the lining. Now, I want my slip pocket in the back because I don't have a zipper pocket, but I want the zipper pocket in the front. So we want the back facing the back. It doesn't matter, whatever, it's your bag, make it how you want it, but this is just how I like to do it. Make sure your handles are stuffed down. Pull, before we clip it, just Pull it side to side to make sure that there are no ripples, your lining isn't too big because if it is, what you can do is go and just here at the top and sew down about an eighth of an inch on each side until it lines up just like that. So we're just going to stuff this down and we are going to clip it. I'm going to start with the side seams first so I know it will stay in the middle because I didn't add snaps. So I'm not sure exactly where my middle mark is. So, and then we're just going to clip around. If you have to, just pull it tight and clip to make sure 
that you're not going to have any bubbles, ripples, or whatever the people like to call it nowadays. Okay, flip it over, pull it tight, get it even. We are going to sew this down from the inside of the bag, a half an inch seam allowance. And I am going to start on the back of the bag. And we're just gonna work our way around. Make sure this is at half an inch. And I just like to Turn the bag as I go and I'm only going to back stitch on my handles one time again uh, that webbing likes to tear if it's got too much stitching and I'm sorry if you can't really see that well but I'm back stitching over the side seams and anytime I want to adjust my needle is down And you might have to, if you're using a magnet like I am, you just have to lift up that handle so it doesn't push your magnet out of the way. If your clips fall, just make sure your lining is still lined up. Now, um, I do not, since there's not a lot of interfacing along the top, I am not going to trim the top just to give it a little bit more structure um, at the top. Now, if I interface this with foam or with anything else on the lining, then I would trim away at the top down to an eighth of an inch um, just so there's not so much bulk in my seam allowance whenever I top stitch but it's not going to be that bulky with no interfacing so I'm just going to turn it there we go. I'm going to shove everything back down in there and I'm not going to close it until after I get done top stitching This orange waterproof canvas is very heavy. It's one of the heavier waterproof canvases because yes, each color is a different weight. Don't ask me why because I have no idea. I just want to push everything down. I'm going to pull on my handles a little bit just to make sure I got them nice and tight in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just roll the seam and I'm going to clip it because yes I top stitch from the inside of the bag you can top stitch however you want I've tried doing it from the outside of the bag but I don't like having to fight the bag on um, to get it around And if your tension is right and your machine is right, the bottom and the top should pretty much look the same. I've never had any complaints. Again, we want to roll this seam. See, it wants to pull in on itself.
Okay, so I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch. And whenever you go to do this, make sure you put your handle under your foot first, asking how I know, so it does not get caught up in your machine. So again, we're just gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch. Take your time. Make sure if you have to, to hold these seams down. And around we go. Again, if you have to shuffle, make sure your needle is down. What I'm going to do before I get to where it meets, I'm going to trim because it won't pull through because I backstitch because yes, I backstitch on my bags um, and I don't want it to knot up or bird nest. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim those threads. There is no problem backstitching on the exterior of your bag if you're confident enough to do it and your machine is set correctly. I mean, granted, it looks a little bit thick where you backstitch right there, but unless it's just a big old bird's nest, it does not look that unprofessional, as you can see right here like I am okay with that so I just pulled that thread to the back and then I will pull it tight and trim these in the inside of the bag and burn the threads down my lighter is about to die okay so now I'm just going to pull out the bottom hook out these corners this in nice and tight get all the air out and get me a tag I make my own tags And I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch. in there. Now we just shove everything back in and poke all the corners out. Sit back and admire a job well done. There we have it. Here's the inside. 
we got our two slip pockets. The bottom looks good and even. It means nothing slipped. And it is ready to go. So thank you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, don't forget to subscribe. Maybe give me a thumbs up and let me know what you did or did not think uh, like about it. Deuces.